Hi everybody, just me, Donald. Um, I'm one of Lurgan Masters qualified open water lifeguards. I'm down here on the beach today uh, to do a little quick conversation about some open water swimming safety if you do come down to the beach this summer. Okay, so one of the first things you want to look at when you come down to the beach is the positioning of the waves. Always a good sign of where it is generally if there are waves on the beach, first of all, one of the safe places to get in is where you can see consistent lines of white water. So we can see nice straight lines of white water here with flat bits in between. And that indicates to me that this is a safer area to get into the water. A common misconception is that areas where there are no waves, which appear to be calmer, they must be safe because the waves are the, people misinterpret those as dangerous. As I'll explain in, the, in a minute, that where we have waves, that indicates safe. Where we don't have waves, that can potentially indicate danger. And I'll explain that later when I'm draw, making a few drawings in the sand. Okay, so one of the next things I'm gonna talk about is, um, we talked about what the rip might look like and some warning signs that there might be a rip in operation when you're looking at the waves. I'm gonna explain, again, some of the other signs that you might see that we can't actually identify here today because it's not happening today, um, but that you might notice. So we're gonna have, this will be our beach, and then this will be the sea. What we like to see are nice straight lines of waves coming into the shore. And that's what indicates to me that it's a safe area to get in because there's regular, dependable current of water coming towards the shore. Now, I suppose a lot of people just Maybe they don't often think about it, or I don't know, maybe they don't think it happens, but the beach isn't, isn't particularly flat. It's, a, it's quite like the drying board beside your sink. And because the beach isn't flat along the, the length of it, this water, as it comes into the shore, has to go somewhere. And so it will track across the beach to an area where it's deeper, and you get these deeper channels. And when you get that deep channel, the water flows into it, turns round, and heads back out to sea again. Now, whenever you're in the water, you might be in a safe zone and think, uh, yep, I'll follow Donald's advice. We're in the area with nice consistent waves, nice consistent white water, uh, no harm can come to me. But you might actually feel the water tugging you sideways. So it's very important that even if you're in these waves, that you pick a dry spot on the beach, maybe it's a telephone post, maybe it's a house, and you try to keep yourself in line with that when you're in the water because if you notice yourself or if you're you're on the land and you're watching your kids in the water and you actually see them starting to drift down the beach eventually that current of water is going to turn change direction and head out to sea and obviously that's when you're stuck in a rip current so as these waves are obviously they are trying to come in across the length of the beach quite often what you'll notice is that that current will actually bend the waves and we'll get a, a picture where we get v-shaped waves like that there and that's as like the current of water is bending the waves before pushing it back out to sea now if the, the current is very strong you'll end up with a, an area with no wave at all so you'll have wave over here wave over here and no current no waves happening at all in the middle you might even see some white water not broken waves but like a like a scum floating on the surface of the water and that will be heading back out to sea and maybe drifting off at an angle. So, um, just to reiterate again, when you come down to the beach, you want to look for areas of nice, consistent, straight white water and waves coming in. When you get into the water, you want to make sure you pick a landmark on the beach that you're going to try and keep yourself level with. If you notice yourself or your, your kids or somebody in the water and they're starting to drift sideways, you're eventually gonna turn around, head out to sea, and the current's gonna take you out in the rip. If you are sort of in this position, you think, actually, I am drifting down the beach, just come out, walk along the beach, and get back in where you were before. And as long as you keep doing that, you're gonna end up safe. If you happen to notice that, do you know what, I'm actually in a rip, it's too late, I can't get back to the shore because the rip is pulling me out like a treadmill in that direction, don't try and fight the rip. Don't try to come straight back in. The best thing you can do is pick an angle towards the shore. 
in the direction of where you can see nice consistent waves. So if your landmark on the beach is over here and you're sitting over there, paddle at an angle towards your landmark where you know you got in and you know there was consistent waves with no rip current. And eventually you'll break free of that current of water back towards the waves and they can help push you in. Uh, it's also very important to know what uh, phase of the tide it is. Is the tide coming in or is the tide going out? Because generally a retreating tide going out to sea is going to be stronger for currents. Um, most, uh, no, if you can, you can generally Google it most times, roughly find a, um, either a major harbour or a lighthouse that's somewhere near where you are getting in the water and they'll have a, a reference point of tides for you. Um, that's it. I'm going to see if I can try and find an area on the beach. Uh, I can't really see anything here at the minute. Probably if I follow this, this watermark on the beach now, if I come down toward it, you can see on a very micro scale of how the, 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 the wet line of the sand does move in and out. On a much bigger scale, that will happen across the length of the beach. Uh, and that's obviously where you're going to find your low points or your high points. The water is going to flow from an area um, that's high and dry. That's where the, the water is shallowest. It's then going to come across to this deeper channel. Again, imagine this on a much bigger scale, to these deeper channels. And that's where the water would head out to sea again. So that's really it. Hopefully that will help keep you safe if you're getting in the water this summer. Obviously, if in doubt, sit it out. Don't get in if you're worried. And if you do see anybody in trouble or you get in trouble yourself, obviously the best thing is not to panic. If you can see people on the land, your international sign of distress is to wave your hand over your head and do that uh, repetitively. Never get in the water by yourself. Always let somebody else know where and when you're getting out into the water and then message them again when you're getting out. Um, if you happen to be getting in by yourself, say you're maybe a triathlete or you're training open water swimming or something like that, you can let local Coast Guard services know by calling their non-emergency number to say, hey, I'm getting in the water by myself. Um, this is where I'm getting in. This is where I, this is the time I expect I'll be getting out. And then obviously notify them when you're getting back out of the water again. Uh, they're generally happy to have that information because they'd rather, they'd rather be preempting something going wrong um, and knowing exactly where to be looking if something did go wrong as opposed to trying to figure it out after, after you've already got into trouble. So hopefully that helps, and if you have any questions and you see me about the club, just give us a shout.